Hi everybody, it's uh, John back with another model inbox review. Um, there's an interesting twist to uh, the inbox review today. What you're looking at here is obviously an image of a MiG-15. Um, the official designation for the MiG-15 was actually the Mikoyan Gyrovich MiG-15, NATO codename Faggot. Um, but we're not just doing a model of a MiG-15. It's um, it's probably easier if I just explain. What I'm actually doing a model of today is this kit here. This is one of Tamiya's dogfight double sets, comprising aircraft from their air combat series in one one hundredth scale. And this, I think, was one of the first Tamiya dogfight double sets that they actually produced. Um, it was originally produced in 1971. Um, and I don't think the Tamiya sets actually sold that well because they never re-released it at any point, shape or form. But I do think, um, although scale mates can't verify this, I do think this kit has been reboxed by another company called Idea. But we'll get to that in the uh, the summing up of the of the kit itself. Um, and I also bring into question the. Uh, the originality of the Tamiya mold as well because I've got a feeling this isn't an original Tamiya kit. I think this is originally a kit by a company called Murasan but um, according to Scalemates it is a standalone model um, but I can't find any Tamiya stamps on the on the molds whatsoever um, and normally Tamiya would put a stamp on it somewhere so I'm, I'm going to put my neck out here and say that this kit was originally a Murasan kit um, but we'll just we'll give scalemates the benefit of the doubt, and uh, we'll just we'll market review it as a as a standalone Tamiya kit. Anyway, this kit was originally released in 1971, um, and this is the only offering in Tamiya that ta in a Tamiya box that Tamiya ever released. They released it in the early 70s. I think it ran for a couple of years, and then they removed it from the shelves and never ventured that that way again. Um, so obviously there's no other boxing reviews to do. There's no other boxing, um, the history of the boxing, because there isn't anything there. So we'll just pan the camera down very quickly for you. And we'll show you this really quite delightful little kit. Um, when I got a hold of this kit, I mean, I never even realised that Tamiya did for dogfight doubles. Certainly not in this sort of scale. Um, but it is a delightful little kit. I'm very impressed with it indeed. Um, so what we'll do, we'll just basically open the lid, but before we do that, you've got some adverts on the side of the lid there. There's a 100 scale logo, there's a guy there, so, well, a young kid playing with his little toy there. And then you've got three images of the Combat series. Now I have built this particular kit before, and there is an inbox review and build project on the G91. Um, and on the other side you've got like the silhouettes and plan view, sorry not a plan view, it's a side elevation view of the two aircraft in question. The other aircraft is a North American F-86F Sabre. So these were the two adversaries in the Korean War, if you like. So we'll just lift the lid. Whoops. And we'll do the inbox of you as we normally do. We'll have a look at those in a minute. The instructions is typical Tamiya from the, from the period. 1970s Tamiya instructions were just like this. Sometimes the English translation is a bit is a, is a bit funny, but um, it's quite good reading if you get hold of one of these early Tamiya kits. They're quite interesting to read. On the front page at the bottom, you know, you've got a paint plan for the two aircraft, and there's a couple of versions for each aircraft, which is nice. And then you've got the construction of the F-86 Sabre in two steps. Gives you an idea on how elementary these kits are. And then in section two, you've got two steps to build a MiG-15. Um, don't really need to go through that. You can see that they're quite simple builds. There's not many parts to this kit whatsoever. But the one thing you will need, especially as they're tricycle undercarriage jets, is you'll need some nose weight in the nose cone. And unfortunately, with both of these two kits, the amount of room you've got to mess about with because they've tried to render an air intake on this particular mould that you haven't got a huge amount of room there to put some 
weight so i would use lead shot packed in with plasticine um, there's probably a little bit more room at the back here at the back of this because you can put some weight inside this inside this splitter here and then pack it in with plasticine in front of the cockpit um, and i think you know you shouldn't have an issue trying to get the aircraft to sit on their undercarriage in that fashion but you can also have them wheels up with a stand that comes with the kit which is quite nice um yeah which is an option it's quite a nice option as well the paint plan on the other side is quite comprehensive you've got like a combat camo color um in i think that's people's republic of china that's the national republic national chinese air force and then you've got the democratic people's republic of korea in those markings and then on this side you've got the republic of china air force which is modern taiwan and and then you've got a usf a usaf variant um which is common to a lot of the market you know it's common to the livery that you see in a lot of the 50s films um set in korea um of this all over silver. these two aircraft are all over silver and so is this one um polished aluminium with yellow and black bands which is quite nice i've got an image of the saber actually which is similar to the, the variant that you can build from this kit the decals now I know Tamiya build fantastic decals now, but in 1971, they weren't much better than 1970s Airfix decals. But with that in mind, they're still not bad. I mean, the register on them, the stars and bars are pretty good. The register on the, the roundels there is, is pretty good as well. And those roundels and the Chinese markings... They look pretty good. They're, they're not bad quality at all. You've got a couple of nicks out here. These are actually purpose-built nicks by Tamiya. To, um, I think they go... Um, oh, God, I can't remember where they go. They go on the fuselage. I'm sure they do. On the um, the Chinese marking ones. Which is interesting but these decals as i said the the rent the register on them is very good um they are quite thick they're quite raised off the backing paper um but the backing film is quite clear and when you think these kits are nearly 50 years old that's not bad is it you know it could have been a lot worse than that so anyway that's the decals we'll get the mig 15s out we'll get that one out of the way after i've done the stand and then we'll cover the, the saber and why i think this particular kit might not be an original tamiya model first of all the canopies the canopies for both kits come on one sprue like this but the saber canopy has actually come away from the sprue but it's it's fine you know so i'm going to show you that first of all that's a saber canopy and the saber canopy is actually quite nice it's quite nicely rendered um, as i said before one 100 scale is actually quite a nice scale to work with because the kits are still quite sizable but they're not so big that they take up loads and loads of room like the 72nd scale models do the mig 15 canopy in my opinion is actually nicer it actually looks a little bit better it's trying to focus there for you. It always finds it difficult to focus on clear parts because it's trying to focus through them, but that's quite nice. I'm quite impressed with that. But the actual tran transparent parts are pretty good. A couple of loose parts in the box here. Um, this is the air intake splitter plate for the MiG-15. It's like an air intake splitter. Quite nice. Um, you've got a pilot seat here. I'm not sure which aircraft this is for, but it'll become apparent. It's quite small, but nice and dainty. And then you've got this guy here. Now, Bill, you're going to love this. This is a 1100 scale pilot. And you have one of these in each of the two aircraft. And, do you know, although he's tiny, he's quite nicely molded. <laughs> He's actually quite nice. He's got, he's in proportion. Um, he 
He doesn't appear to be sat on the toilet. He doesn't look like a little chimpanzee. He looks like a human being with a flying helmet on. Um, I think Tamio have done a really good job with rendering him. He's very, very pleased indeed with that. And then you've got the stand parts. And the stand parts are quite interesting. Because... And I'm not quite sure what's going on here. You've got two of these base parts to the stand. Um, and they're quite a thick and bulky thing, you know, which is interesting. Do they go like that? They might go, oh, that's what it is. They go like that, don't they? I've got, yeah. So you've got an X-shaped display stand. And then you've got the two struts, one short and one's long, obviously, to have one aircraft above the other. And then I think you've got two cannons, and I think these come off the MiG-15. Those go underneath the air intake at the front of the aircraft's airframe, which is quite nice. Two 23mm and a 37mm cannon, which the MiG-15 was equipped with. Um, the parts for the aircraft themselves are actually run-of-the-mill. They're not particularly fantastic. They're, they're not bad. Um... I don't think they're anything to write home about. But when you think this kit is 100th scale and not 72nd, I think they're equal to a 72nd scale moulded kit. You know, I don't think there are any issues with that whatsoever. I think the seat and the pilot... No, the seat has definitely come out of this kit. The pilot has probably come off this kit as well. There's three three slots missing, but um, I mean, look, you've got you've got the wheels, the wheels. They're just run of the mill wheels. They're not particularly well detailed. There's not a lot going on there. The t nose wheel. It's just run of the mill, which is you know, as I said, it's a 1971 mold. It's a Tamiya kit, and it's it's about as good as you'd have got in 72nd from. Maybe a lesser company, certainly Airfix, wouldn't have produced a kit much better than this on 72nd scale. Now then, the Sabre Sprue is an interesting one because I've seen an image of the Idea kit which was released in the late 90s, I believe. Maybe the late 80s, I can't remember exactly. But the sprue on the Idea Sabre is exactly the same as this. Now, Scalemates haven't got the Idea kit as being sourced from the Tamiya kit, but the sprue that was underneath the Sabre sprue was exactly the same size as the MiG-15 sprue. And I could see the MiG-15's wings, but not the fuselage. So I can't guarantee that the Idea kit of the MiG-15 is the same, but I'm guessing it is. The detail on the, uh, the Sabre is actually quite nice. Um, you've got a bit of flash there on the internal seat arrangement there you can see where is it there it is above the wheels can you see the flash on that internal seat which is a bit of a shame but um, you've got another one of these pilots there you go Bill he's quite nice isn't he quite like him I think all paint up quite nice and then you've got a little bit of detail on the wings the parts are quite nicely cast it's not a bad looking kit I don't think that Tamiya have done a bad job and the, the lines yeah they are raised but you know you'd never expect recessed panel lines from a kit that was moulded in the 1970s and certainly not from 1971 so that's basically the parts as I said there's not a lot to write home about but I'm pretty sure that this was originally a Murasan kit and it's definitely been reboxed by idea um, so the originality of the Tamiya model is very much in question what I want to do very quickly is I just pan the camera back up and show you an image of the, of the uh, Sabre that I wanted to show you because this particular Sabre is very similar. It's in the air show circuits in America at the moment and this particular Sabre is in similar colours. It will have the similar appearance to the kit that I'll be building in this one 100 scale dogfight double. Um, I don't think there's any way on earth that I'm going to get a high polished finish from the from the, uh, the the silver that I'll be applying to the kit um, but there is one particular subber uh, that I've subbed to his channel who does seem to get a very very good finish of um, polished aluminium and chromium steel parts on, on his aircraft and that's a guy called um, 
oh, I can't remember his name now. It will come to me in a minute. Frankie Day. So if you're watching or listening in Frankie Day, well done. I've seen a couple of your models recently. Um, one of them had a high uh, metal finish on it and it looked absolutely superb. I think it was a Commando. Um, was it a Commando? I think it was a Commando. I'm pretty sure it was. Um, transport and aircraft and it looked absolutely superb. But that's the, the image that that I wanted to show you for the Sabre. Just pan back down to the box so you, you can have a look at that and then I'll give you the um, the gump off the kit and we'll close this video up. I don't think it's going to be a long video, this one. So basically, the kit we're doing a review on today is the Tamiya North American F86F Sabre and the Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-15 Faggot. The release date of the kit was 1971 and the serial number on the model was PA1022. And the kit's moulded in one one hundredth scale. There are decals for two sabers, one of an 18th fighter bomber corps based in the USAF during the Korean War, and the second is a F-86 sabre in the Republic of China Air Force livery. And there are also two decal versions for the MiG-15, one in the People's Republic of Korea's Air Force, and the second is a MiG-15 in the People's Republic of China Air Force. Now there are 55 parts on four silver grey plastic sprues and two parts on a clear plastic sprue, producing 57 parts in total. The dimensions of the kits, the sabre is about four and a half inches long. It has a span of four and a half inches and it should sit an inch and a half high on its undercarriage. The MiG-15 is slightly smaller at four and a quarter inches long, but has the same span at four and a half and it will sit an inch and a half above the ground on its undercarriage. The options and costs, there are really only one model, I'm pretty sure there is only one model in 1 100th scale. Now I know there are loads and loads and loads of MiG-15s and loads and loads and loads of F-86s and different scales um, and different companies available, but I didn't really want to go through ploughing through loads and loads of different options. Um, I only really wanted to concentrate on the 1 100th scale and I'll be doing this in the future with subjects on my inbox of use where it covers aircraft which are very 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 popular in the modeling scene i'll just be covering the options and costs for that particular scale and in one 100 scale standalone kits of murasan f86 and mig 15 i've got no costs available for that but i'm guessing it's quite collectible so it will probably fetch in excess of 20 quid um the Tamiya F-86 and MiG-15 Dogfight Double Combat Series set retails for anything between £7 and £12. I have seen them go for quite... Sorry, I've seen them advertised for a lot more money than that, but they've never sold for more than £12. Um, Hobbycraft also do an F-86 and a MiG-15 based on the Tamiya kit, and that kit retails for £10 to £12. And Idea also do an F-86 and MiG-15, and this I'm pretty sure is based on the Tamiya kit. And that retails for anything between eight and fifteen pound. Now there is another dogfight double set, right? Which you can get um, of the F eighty six and the MiG fifteen. One is a seventy second scale offering in a club airfix kit of the F eighty six Saber and the MiG fifteen. They're both new tool models. They're not the old tool kits, and those kits retail for between ten and twenty pound. And in one forty eight scale, you can get an F eighty six and MiG fifteen dogfight double set from monogram and these kits retail for something between 20 and 25 pound um, but again i've seen them advertised for an awful lot more money than that but they've never sold more than 25 quid now conclusions in tune with all tamiya air combat series models this dogfight double set is no exception basic but good accuracy with clean lines and a rudimentary interior the pilots are also very good for this scale and the last Tamiya 1100 scale aircraft kit I put together was easy peasy. So it shouldn't really have any issues with this model in its construction decal application um, or understanding what the Japanese translation means. Um, that, as I said, when you get some of these older instruction leaflets and some of these Tamiya kits, the translation into English is actually quite funny. So that's the inbox of you for the 1100 scale F86 F Sabre and MiG-15 Dogfight Double from the Tamiya Air Combat Series. I hope this video has been of some use. Um, if you have any queries, questions, just pop them in the comments boxes and I'll, I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. 
I hope all of you guys are, ha uh, are well and I hope your modeling projects are going very, very smooth. Uh, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you for the next one. Thank you. Bye bye.